we're ready to use Minitab 17 to perform a different kind of hypothesis test, a two proportions test, a test on two different proportions. I am a medical researcher now. My company has developed a new cream for eczema patients, people who are suffering from eczema on their skin, putting on this new cream and seeing if they get some relief from their eczema, a reduction in the symptoms. So what we've done is we've gotten two groups of people. We've given one group, we've randomly assigned them to two groups. Some of them have gotten the real drug, and you can see in column C1 here, I've recorded the real drug with yeses and noes, saying who was affected, who actually a yes means that they were affected and there was a reduction in their eczema, a no means there was no effect. The other group has gotten a placebo, same thing. Yes means there was a reduction, no means there was no reduction. And the question is, does the drug actually improve their results? In other words, are more people, is a higher proportion of people who got the drug affected by it than those who got the placebo? So our claim, because we're working for the drug company, we want to say that a greater proportion of those who got the drug saw a reduction in eczema, eczema, than those who received the placebo. Let's consider that. We want to turn that into a null and an alternative hypothesis. So that is a greater than statement. This is an alternative hypothesis. H1, the proportion who got the drug is greater than the proportion placebo. Proportion in this case is the proportion of those who got a yes, the proportion of those who saw some sort of reduction. And then our null hypothesis, H0, is of course going to be that same thing with an equal statement. The pr proportion among those who got the drug is the same as the proportion among those who got the placebo. The last thing we need, of course, is a confidence level. Let's say that we are going to work at 95% confidence, or a significance of 0 0.05. I could also say alpha is 0 0.05. <coughs> ready to do the test? I'm ready to do the test. So we're going to go to stat basic statistics, and we are looking for two proportions. We have two samples now, the drug and the placebo, and I have them in two separate columns. So let me say two proportions, and now it, the mini tab wants to know, are both samples in one column? In other words, is all of your data actually in one column, or did you put that in two separate columns? Well, I put it in two separate columns. One column is the drug, one column is the placebo. So I'm going to click this arrow, and I'm going to say each sample is in its own column. So then Minitab wants to know sample one and sample two. Now I want to put these in in the same order that I did my hypotheses. I did drug first, placebo second. So I'm going to do drug as sample one, placebo as sample two. Then I'm going to click options. My confidence level is 95. My hypothesized difference is zero. I didn't say that I expected the proportion to be greater by 0.3 which would be 30%, I just said, are they equal or is one greater? So I'm really saying, is there a difference of zero or is there more than zero? So I'm going to leave that difference at zero. And my alternative was a greater than statement. So I'm going to look at greater than. My test method is to estimate the proportion separately. I could do the pooled estimate of the proportion too. It doesn't actually matter. I'm going to just leave it at estimate the proportion separately. And we're going to say, OK. And then we're going to say, OK. And you can see I get my p-value right here of 0. Now, this is using the normal distribution. Minitab also does another test called the Fisher's exact test, which gives me a p-value. In this case, they're the same. They're probably not identical, but out to three decimal places, they're both 0. So the p is low. The null must go. The null must go means I can accept the alternative. I'm rejecting the null. I'm accepting the alternative. My original claim was an alternative, so with 95% confidence, if I want to state my confidence level, I don't have to, but let's say it this way. There is enough evidence to warrant the claim that a greater proportion of those who receive the drug see a reduction in eczema compared to those who receive the placebo. Excellent for me if I'm working for the drug company. Now, I now work for the Department of Health. I know I bounce around jobs a lot. And the Department of Health wants to know, 
is it who are the more likely to be smokers, men or women? Is there a greater proportion of smokers among men or women, or are they the same? Let's just start with that idea. Are they the same? So my original claim is going to be that they are the same. Claim the proportion proportion of females who smoke is the same as the proportion of males who smoke. So is that a null or an alternative? Well, that's certainly a null. I'm saying it's the same. That's an equal statement. So my null hypothesis is that the proportion of smokers among females is equal to the proportion among males. My alternative, if I'm testing a claim that's an equal statement, the best alternative is a not equal. The proportion among females is not equal to the proportion among males. And again, let's work at 95% confidence. So I'm going to say my significance is 0 0.05, where I'm working at 95% confidence. Let's do a two proportions test again. Stat, basic statistics, two proportions. But this time, oh, before I do that, I should look at my worksheet. Because here, I put all the evidence about whether or not they're a smoker in the same column, column 6. So all my data is actually in column 6. Column 5 just tells me if each person I asked was a female or a male. So now I have all my data, all my sample, in one column. And I have another column that is my by column that tells me what I'm sorting it by. So when I do stat, basic statistics, two proportions, this time I'm saying both samples are in one column. And so now it wants to know what are the samples. The samples is the actual data I'm looking for the proportion of. In this case, whether or not they're smokers. So that's going to be my smoker. The sample IDs is my bivariable. How am I separating the two groups? I'm separating them by gender. So I'm going to double click gender. My options, I want the, not, the confidence level to be 95%. Again, the difference is 0. This time, I'm using a not equal as my hypothesis. And again, I can just leave that. I'm going to say OK and OK. And you're going to see. It has calculated for me, using the normal distribution, a p-value of 0.458. Using the Fisher's exact test, a p-value of 0.527. Either way, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. The p is high, the null can fly. I fail to reject the null hypothesis. So there is not enough evidence, and if you wanted to say at 95% confidence, that's fine, to reject the claim that the proportion of females who smoke is the same as the proportion of males who smoke. Note, I'm not saying they are the same. I'm saying there's not enough evidence to reject that. I never accept a null hypothesis.